Good afternoon everyone and once again thank you uh, for joining us for this short service. A special welcome of course to any of you who are tuned in uh, and living by yourselves for whatever reason nor you particularly uh, close to us at this time. On Sunday uh, we celebrate the great feast of Pentecost. Pentecost, simply a Greek, mean, a Greek word meaning 50th. And we use that word because it's 50 days since we celebrated Easter. What, you may wonder, is special about Pentecost Sunday? Well, of course, Pentecost Sunday celebrates the birth of our church. If we take our minds back to Holy Week and the Last Supper, we recall the very first communion service. That service, when Jesus broke the bread and gave it to disciples with the words that have echoed down through the centuries, Take it and eat. This is my body. Do this in memory of me. But he also told them, he warned them, that he was to be betrayed. But not only betrayed, but be betrayed by one of them. Then of course he was arrested, and of course we know what happened after that arrest. The disciples, of course, must have been absolutely terrified and they fled back and they fled back to that same upper room in which they had celebrated that famous meal. They must have thought that any moment now they too were to go the same way as their master had gone. But they didn't. Instead, Joyful rumours were spreading around the area. Many of them seeped through to these disciples. It sounded impossible, but probably remembering Jesus' words, it could possibly be true. Yes, they thought, he could have risen, because he said he would. Then, in what must have been the most wonderful moment, in the history of the world, just like that, he was there. He hadn't knocked, he hadn't called out, he was just there. He said that he would, and he had. One moment, the apostles and friends were sunk in black despair, and the next, they were in the morning light of hope. This was the very first stirrings of our church. Jesus tells them, It is for your own good that I have to leave you, because unless I go, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when the Spirit of Truth comes, he will lead you to the complete truth. I'm not quite sure what the apostles thought about that. How could any arrangement be better than having Christ with them? It was only after they had received the Holy Spirit that they realised what Christ had meant. Only then did they realise that he was no longer physically present, but he was present in a much more wonderful way, in his spirit. And that present, that presence transformed them. They became different people. And that presence transforms us too, and makes us, you and me, different. The same spirit who came to the apostles on the day of Pentecost, lives in each one of us and it is through him that we are able to believe 
in Christ, love Christ, and have confidence in Christ. The Holy Spirit lives in us, uniting us to Christ and pouring out his love upon us. And this isn't just a way of talking, this isn't merely words. We have our Lord's word that it is a fact. But the Spirit doesn't merely live in us, me and you, as individuals. The Spirit is also at work in the church, the community of God's people here on earth. The Holy Spirit guides the church, not just just as the small apostolic community hidden away in that upper room on the first Pentecost. That guidance is still the same. It is particularly important that we should remember this truth today when the church is going through a period of self-examination and change. We mustn't be afraid or be faint-hearted. We must have confidence in the Holy Spirit. The sort of confidence that the apostles had when they set out under his guidance to convert the world. It may take a long time before we can say clearly where the Spirit is leading us. Through our blindness, we may ignore his lead and possibly take wrong turnings, but he will always be there to guide us onto the right path. And as we've heard, when the Spirit of Truth comes, he will lead you to the complete truth. Amen. I would like to share with you just a short prayer. A prayer I found in a small book, the Glenstall Book of Prayer. And it's a small Benedictine community in County Limerick in Ireland, which I believe was founded in the 1920s. And that prayer is quite simple. And it simply says, Bless all who worship you, Almighty God, from the rising of the sun to its setting. From your goodness enrich us. By your love inspire us. By your spirit guide us. By your power protect us. In your mercy receive us. Now and always. Amen. Once again, just a quick thank you to all who have joined in today. The lockdown seems to be easing slightly. And please God, it won't be long before we are back together physically again in our churches. But while we're still locked out of those churches, we're not locked out of God's love or God's mercy. So let us stay united spiritually as ever we were when we sat next to each other in our churches. Thank you once again, and may God continue to bless you and your families. Amen.